Okay, this fake video is an internal migration. Now, this one is between countries. So internal means from one area of country to another. And in this example, we'll look at Catania in Rio de Janeiro, or to Rio de Janeiro. So in this video, we're looking at the case study detail. Now, it's really important when you're writing your case studies to include as many of the facts and figures as possible that kind of show the examiner you know what you're talking about. So this video is going to include quite a few facts that you can use to support the arguments you're making. What we're also going to do is to understand these push and pull factors. So it's usually in your opening paragraph you'll be asked to talk about why are people moving. And it's going to be these push and pull factors that you'll have to write about. And also we're going to explain some of the impacts to Rio with all these people moving in. So first things first, where is Continua and where is Rio? So from this map you can see that Continua is in the north of Brazil and the general movement of people is from this region up in the north southwards to Rio on the coast. So the general movement is southerly, sort of almost southwest. So why do people move? Now these are two specific push factors and pull factors that you can include. So one push factor pushing people out of Catania is the fact that there are quite a few people living in the region. There's over 15 million and they're all relying on the infertile soils in the area. So it's pretty much a farming community and they're wanting to produce as many crops as they can from the soils. But they're infertile, they don't always produce and people aren't always to make, able to make a living from what they're doing. So this is one major push factor, pushing people away from Catania. Now they're attracted to Rio for the following reasons. There is a big economy in Rio. It's the second largest city in Brazil and it has the second largest economy within Brazil as well. So it has big industries in petroleum, furniture, clothing and textiles. Now all of these industries can be providing quite a few jobs that these people in Catania could do, so unskilled labour. So this is the reason why they're going to be attracted to this city and wanting to find work there. So here's some more push and pull factors. So like I said at the beginning, these are the reasons why people are wanting to move. They're going to be pushed away for Catania for reasons such as crop failure, its remoteness, insufficient food, and they're going to be pulled towards Rio for its more reliable food supply, its better housing, and its better paid jobs. And as you explaining these push and pull factors, remember you have to explain as well and develop the impact these are going to have on those people's lives. So they're the push and pull factors you need to talk about. Now we're going to move on to the social impacts for Rio. So this is mostly to do with housing. So you see here half a million are homeless, a million people live in favelas, that's about 20% of the city's population, a million live in poor local authority housing, which is that housing provided by the city itself. And we've used this example before. We use Rashina, which is the largest shantytown settlement with over 100,000 people, which is in the southwest of the city. Now we've talked about the benefits and negatives of shantytowns before. So you've got to be talking about what sort of negatives will shanty towns create? So it's going to be your crime of all those people trapped together. It's going to be the overcrowdedness. It's going to be the disease spreading. It's going to be the lack of sewage. And these sort of problems we associate. So you can talk about when you're writing your case study how one social negative could lead to environmental and economic negatives as well. Next, we'll talk about the environmental impacts. So there are a limited number of routes in and out of Rio because it's mountainous and you can't build roads um, on sort of difficult terrain. So there's only two, three, four major routes outside of Rio. So one example is Avenue Brazil there in italics, heading west. So this means most of the cars are going to go through those major routes trying to get in and out of Rio and that's going to cause severe pollution, congestion, both day and night. Now to impact this even more, 40% more cars, or there are 40% more cars in Rio in the last decade. So there's more and more car ownership more and more cars polluting, getting congested and adding to this haze that exists right across the bay. So that last point there, traffic fumes stay in the bay, they're trapped there and it's going to cause all sorts of health problems and environmental problems to the city. Some more negative impacts. Most of the beaches and sea are polluted around Rio, so the, um, the sewage goes straight out into the sea and Rio has 31 miles of shoreline which is a significant amount to be polluted. Waste and rubbish are left in the streets, so we talked about this before in the favelas. There is no litter collection, there's no sewage works, so all of that ends up in the street, and as we said, diseases spread. So no system for sewage, so water supplies come contaminated, so 55 rivers, rivers are polluted, and it would cost £608 million pounds to fix, which is a huge amount for a city to afford. And this is happening slowly, too slowly to accommodate all those people moving in. 
and also disease spread quickly. So it's cholera outbreak in 1992. So that's one of those facts you can include to support the reasons why there are so many problems and so many negatives in uh, Rio. So you can say this environmental impact of pollution in the streets is causing social impacts of cholera. So we'll end up with the economic. So crime is high. In those favelas, crime is high because people are congested together, people are desperate for money, they don't always find work, and people will turn to crime. So the statistic here is 37 murders per 100,000 people per year, compared to London where it's 1.9 murders per 100,000 people per year. So it's significantly higher, it's a dangerous place to live. Drug trafficking exists in Rio, and drug use is a big problem. So there's costs of clearing that up, there's costs of policing that too. And this has had an impact on the tourist industry. With those 31 miles of beaches, you're going to have a lot of tourists coming in wanting to go there for the, for the sea, for the sand. If there is a hard, high amount of crime and those tourists are targeted, 6.82 million visits per year is a huge amount for the real economy. So this could have a massive impact for some of the money coming into the city and its ability to, um, uh, its ability to look after and repair itself. And also wealthy residents are moving out to this place called Barra de Tijuca, can't pronounce that, but that's out to a safer environment. So the money is leaving Brazil, it's not coming in with the tourists, it's not coming into Rio because people are living there, the wealthier are living out and right in the centre you're getting poorer and poorer communities that cost more and more to look after, to police. So as a summary, We've been through your push and pull factors. You need to know why people move. That's going to be the opening thing you talk about in your case study. You will have to also know about the impacts. So make sure you know your social, economic and environmental impacts. And also make sure you can back it up with that case study detail. So watch this again. As you're watching it, highlight some of those facts that you're most likely to remember that you can use to support your case study.